In today's class, we are going to do lab record program number six. Okay, this is the next program in our list and we are going to do that. So before uh, we go to that, normally I put a PPT. So um, I mean, to avoid theory part, I am going to skip that PPT uh, and I'm going to explain it on the flow. Okay, so uh, let me just read the question first, then we'll go to the program. Uh, Android app to demonstrate text to speech and Google speech recognizer intent using a voice notepad. Okay, now uh, before that, only uh, the first part is there in your syllabus. This is something which I wanted to add and I've added it. Okay, text to speech is there in your syllabus. Uh, that's why I'm uh, demonstrating that. But this is something which is extra, uh, which is also kind of cool. So uh, I've put that also. Uh, and to make it uh, like look like a small notepad. Okay, uh, notepad in the sense, not like too much of uh, features. Rather, we are just going to open a text file, uh, write a text file, save a text file like that. Okay, so basic operations only we are going to do. So let me do it step by step. First part, I will do text to speech, followed by which we'll uh, we'll uh, take the user's voice and do a command, and then we do some operation based on his voice command. Okay, this is what our target is for today. Let's get into the program. Let me go back to Android Studio. I've already created a project called Lab Record Six. Okay, and I'm going to start. So let me first do the design. Design is going to be pretty simple for the first part of your program. It is just going to be uh, one text box, one button. Okay, you type something in the text box and click on this button. I want this system to read out uh, that particular text. Okay, just want you to read it out. I hope you follow. I type hello. I want the system to tell that hello to me. Read the text which is there in the uh, text box or somewhere. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So let me just uh, start with this. First of all, let me convert a uh, constraint layout to a linear layout because I want it one by one. So I'll convert this view to a linear layout. First thing. Okay, second thing is that I don't want a horizontal linear layout. I wanted a vertical linear layout. So one by one. Then I already have a text view. Let me not delete it. Uh, the text view. What I'll do is I'll just name it as, uh, um, I'm not going to use it in program. This is just the title of my program. So I'm going to just put it as voice notepad. Okay. And uh, I want to keep it in the middle of the screen. So I'll just put gravity as center. Okay. And the size is too small. So I'll just make it a little bit bigger. So uh, I've kept the title and then below that I want one uh, edit text. Okay, so that I can type something. So I'll use a text input layout below that. And below that I'll put one small button. Okay, so um, basically I have three controls. One is the text view, which you already see there. Second one is the text input layout, which took the entire screen. So let me fix that by saying height is wrap content. Okay, and the next the button uh, again, I'm going to just say uh, weight, height, okay, width and height, I'm going to say match the parent uh, width. Okay, so then I think this I can put wrap content and uh, height also is wrap content. Okay, the content is a uh, little bit bigger. I think it's gone to layout. Okay, that we will fix it. Okay, done. So now I have one text box, one button, that's all. So I'm going to just name it appropriately so that I can go to the code part. So first thing, I'm going to click on the edit text, not the layout, and remove the hint from the edit text. Let me go to the layout and give the hint. Okay, so I'll give the hint as uh, enter text to be read. That's all. Okay, and uh, let me get into the edit text. Now I'm going to name this because I'm going to call it in the program. So I'm going to say um, et edit text which holds content to read so i'll just say um, read content okay that's it all right so this is one and then button uh, i'm going to just put it as uh, btn speak or read whatever you want to call it as okay i'm going to refactor it so this is the button for that and then the text i'm going to say speak or read text That's all. So, and I want the button to come in the middle of this uh, design. So, I'm going to put layout gravity center. So, that's it. Okay. Uh, if you want, you can also give uh, a margin for all these controls. So, I'm going to just put a margin. Okay. So, now I have uh, a text box and, sorry, uh, and a button. 
So if you click on this button, I would like uh, whatever you have typed here, text to be read out by the system. That's all. Okay, this is the first step of my program. So let's do that first. For that, we are going to use a concept called text to speech class in Android. Okay, uh, it's, it's available in almost all the phones. Uh, some phones have two engines, like for example, Samsung phones. Uh, they have their own text to speech engine. And then uh, almost all other phones have uh, Google's uh, text to speech engine. All right, so uh, if you don't have a text to speech engine, it will not work. So uh, majority of the phones already have. Okay, so you just need to check in the accessibility of your phone, which I'll show you shortly. But here I'm just going to keep this one. This is all the design. Let me go to the code part. Now, I don't want to use um, the first to second method of attaching a listener. I'm going to use the third method. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to create a method called public uh, void do some action or do action and I'll just give the word as view space V. Okay, this is the, uh, what do you call the template or the signature method, which is possible to be attached to a design. So I'm gonna just click on this button and I'm gonna find an on click method. Okay, and I'm gonna choose that method, which I just created. So which means if you click on this button, this method should be called. Okay, what I'm gonna write in that we will do later. Right now, I don't wanna write anything. I just want linked it. Okay, so then I'm going to do, uh, first of all, I need to find out this control, the edit text, which is there in the screen in the code. So uh, that I'm going to initialize. Number one, uh, text input edit text. This is not a normal edit text because I use the text input layout. So I'm going to say text input edit text and uh, I'm going to say read content. I'll just put read underscore content. Is he, uh, let me just keep it there. I'm just initializing it. Okay, then I'm going to create an object of text to speech please note it comes from android.speech.tts which is text to speech okay so i'm going to just create an object name as tts that's it this is all i'm going to do first thing okay the second thing what i'm going to do here is uh, we are going to take or initialize all these things in the code part okay so let me do that uh, first in the on create itself i am going to initialize read content is equal to find view by id r dot id dot beat uh, sorry uh, et read content that's the uh, text box in my screen button i'm not going to bother because i've already been uh, um, i've already given that part already okay so i'm not going to call that okay the next part is uh, tts okay so before i start with tts there is some uh, important thing which i need to tell okay just hold on a second recording in progress Okay, so uh, the object, the text to speech object, which you, which I'm going to create here, okay, uh, needs to be initialized. Please understand this. Uh, the text to speech object, which I'm about to create, needs to be initialized. How do you initialize it? TTS is equal to new text to speech object. I'm just going to initialize. But the problem is that new text to speech object requires two parameters to be passed. I want to show you those two parameters. One context. Okay, by now you know what to give for context. Okay, I want the text to speech to work in this activity. So context, I'm just going to give the word this. Okay, second one, it says on init listener. Okay, so uh, what do you mean by an on init listener? Uh, as soon as you initialize this text to speech, what would you like to do? Okay, in my case, what I would like to do is I would like you to um, see whether the text to speech is available in that system. Okay, if it is available, I want you to set the language of that particular text to speech object to a language which I want. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna keep it as English. All right, so uh, let me just start typing. First of all, this, uh, what do you mean by this context? Okay, second parameter, I need to give an object of uh, listener. Okay, uh, listener is an interface, so I'm gonna create an object of that. So I'm gonna say new, you can see that only one method is coming with an interface there, text to speech dot on listener, on init listener i'm just going to press enter okay you can see that it automatically creates a simple method there all right so here what i'm going to write here in this part on in it is it is passing the status whether it is available or not so all i'm going to do is is a simple if condition if status is equal to equal to text to speech dot success okay if uh, the text to speech engine has no issues and it is available to use Okay, what am I going to do? Uh, I am just going to set the uh, language of the system. 
okay the language of the system to english that's all or not system i mean the tts object which you have created i would like to set this uh, to english so i'm going to say tts dot set language please note it returns an integer okay so uh, what i am going to do is i am going to see whether this uh, result is giving me uh, a, a particular number which indicates this this language is available and the data is not uh, 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 corrupted okay so why i am telling this is every language has a, a package okay like for example if you want text to speech in english english has a package which normally comes with any language any uh, android phone okay but if you want a different language like french or uh, russian or german okay like that you will have to install download uh, another package and install so uh, there's a simpler way to check it also i'll show that in a, in a, in a second but just look, look at this okay set language i'm going to call local dot you can choose whichever language you want whichever local is available you can just see have a glance it start i have chosen english already so english is coming in the uh, part next one is canada and then canadian french china chinese uh, uh, french german italy okay italian japanese korean like that lot of things are available i'm just going to see uh, because i'm not going to bother about this i'm going to just choose local dot english okay now this is it this is enough but then how will you know that this particular language whatever language you have chosen is already available or not okay it's very simple store that result okay i'm going to say result is equal to you saw that uh, set language returns an integer so i'm going to keep that uh, int as a uh, uh, result data type okay i'm going to keep it there and i'm going to check with simple if condition if result is equal to equal to text to speech dot okay if at all that language is not supported okay minus 2 will be returned but it is a, a full in caps which means it is a constant value okay so i'm going to say if result returns language not supported or result is equal to equal to text to speech dot um let's say missing data language is missing that data any of these two actions happen put a toast to the user saying that it is not possible okay so i'll just say text to speech not available that's all okay else uh, you can easily write the next part else is the uh, part which you are going to say uh, if at all you want to speak but i don't want to speak here i want to call it uh, this is just initialization part which i am doing on create okay when do you want me to speak when i click on the button okay so i've just as soon as this activity is initialized i am seeing whether text to speech is available if it is available i'll not see anything okay but if it is not available i'll see a toast saying that text to speech not available that's all that's all i've written so far so only this much to initialize i've just minimized it so that it doesn't look too big okay i hope this is clear okay let me just repeat text to speech object i'm going when i'm initializing okay uh, status is passed to me i'm checking whether the status is success if the status is success i am trying to set the language uh, to the locale of english okay but if uh, whatever language i'm typing here will be set right now i've set english so i don't think so i'll find an error but uh in case i'm trying to use french or german or italian or korean or something like that and that language data is not available in the phone in which you are trying this okay this result will return something okay it say that the language is not supported or that language does not have data okay whatever it is so if the result uh, res returns saying that that language is not supported or that language has missing data i will just put a toast saying that it is not available that's all this is just to initialize the text to speech how do you make the system speak just call tts object and say speak that's all okay so first uh, i let me go into the button when you, once you click on this button i would like something to happen so uh, first of all let me put a switch case because i'll be adding one more button later so i'm going to say v dot get id okay which button did you click on so if it is the first button there's only one button right now but later i'll be adding button that's why i'm using a switch case r dot id dot btn speak okay i'm going to keep a break now this is how i'll be writing but uh, i would like you to follow another simpler mechanism okay this is just a recommendation it's not compulsory that you follow it okay i normally recommend you to divide your work into small small methods okay that's the simplest way of programming guys okay if you write everything in one program or everything in one block it might get confusing later so now what i'm going to do is i'm writing a method which is going to take the text what you need to speak and just going to speak okay so uh, let me create a method this is please note this is on create this is the button click method uh, between that i'm writing or anywhere you can write i'm just writing it so that you understand i am not going to um, use 
um, inbuilt methods, but rather I am going to create my own method and uh, I'm going to divide this program into small, small pieces, then put them together. So I'm going to say public void. Uh, I'm going to say speak text. Okay. And whatever you pass to me will be the text. Okay. So uh, if you call this method, what this is a method which I created guys, it's not inbuilt. Okay. I'm just creating a simple public void, some uh, name, uh, some text. Okay. So all I wanted to do is when I give this text, I wanted to speak this text. What will I write here? Okay. It's very simple. Uh, you know that uh, how do I uh, speak? Okay. All I need to do is uh, to um, let's say uh, TTS. Okay. The TTS object is right now available globally because I initialized it uh, globally instantiated as soon as the on create is called. Now all I need to do is TTS dot speak. Okay. And you need to pass some parameters. What are the parameters? Number one, uh, what to speak. That is what I'm passing to you, isn't it? So I can just pass it here as text. Number one, what to speak. Okay. Second one, Q mode. Okay. Why am I bothered about this Q mode and all those things? Okay. I'll show you shortly. There are two cues available in uh, text to speech. One is add. Okay. What is add? See, for example, I, I type hello. Then I am typing uh, uh, world. Okay. And then I'm pressing uh, play. Okay. When I typed hello world and I typed play, hello world is right now being spoken. Before that could end, if I type something else and clicked on play again, okay, whatever you are you are playing right now will not be cleared. It will be playing. After that is played, second sentence will be played. That is called Q add, add to the Q. Second option is there, Q flush. Okay, what is Q flush? That is, uh, let's say for example, one sentence I'm reading. Okay, uh, and then while I'm reading the first sentence, I'm saying speak now, second sentence. Okay, what happens? First sentence will be abruptly cleared. Okay, it will be removed and the new one will be start playing. So let me just show you text to speech. Okay, dot two cues are there. I hope you can see that. Only two cues are there. Number one is add, number two is flush. I'll show you the difference. First, let me click on add. Okay, next, third operation which I need to pass is a hash map or a bundle of parameters. Okay, I don't have any parameters, so I'm gonna just pass null. All right, and one more thing I want you to remember. Okay, be very careful with this, what I'm saying. Android 11 onwards. There is a small change in the code. Okay, that I'm not writing that right now, but uh, it is very important that if you are targeting a phone which has Android 10 and above, one extra step is required. I'll show that shortly. But uh, here, please note the one which is striked out is a deprecated one. But if you write the top one, it will expect you to use uh, API level 21 and above. Okay, so I'm going to continue using this deprecated right now for uh, time purpose. Later, if you want, you can obviously put uh, another comma and put double quotes. That's all. Utterance ID. That's one extra parameter in the latest uh, version. When I put that, you see there is an error. What is the error? It says that uh, it requires API level 21. Okay, that is why I'm not using that. I'm just removing that. I'll just keep this null. That's enough. There'll be no error with that. Okay, now, will this work now? No, because you've not called this method anyway. So uh, BTN speak, when you click on BTN speak, call this method called speak text and where will you get this text from? Okay, that is there in the text box. So let me just create string. Okay, and let me get the uh, word which you have entered there. Okay, so how will I get the word? It is there in the uh, edit text, which I've already initialized uh, globally. So all I'm going to do here is get the value from that and uh, pass it here. So I'm gonna say string um given text okay i'll just put given underscore text is equal to uh you know that edit text i think i created on the top i named it as read content so i'm going to say read content dot get text dot to string that's it okay that's all i have added now i've got the string i can just call this method called speak text and pass the given text that's it Okay, this code, what I've written is more than enough in order to um, make text to speech work in Android phones still Android 10. 11 requires one more advantage, one more added code. I'll show you that, but please remember this only applies to if you are, if you are uh, running it on an Android phone, which is greater than 10, which is 11 on or above. Okay, uh, Android 11 and above. Okay, my emulator, what I'm running is Android 11. That's why I'm telling you this. Okay, but uh, your phones, I don't think so would have, uh, not everybody's phone would have Android 11. Okay, so you need not do any of this, what I'm doing right now, but I am just adding it for people who are targeting Android 11 and above. Okay, uh, above the application tag, you have to add one more tag called queries. Okay, in that one, you have to add another tag called intent. 
and in that one you have to add a tag called uh, action okay in that one i am looking for a tts service okay which is automatically not coming but you can add it okay i'm going to just remove that uh, attached data and i'm going to put tts underscore service please don't forget the spelling okay this is what i'm looking for all right android uh, queries intent action uh, you are going to use or uh, advantage uh, you you're going to take the advantage of tts service in your program that's all okay this is very essential to add if it is if you are targeting um, let's say uh, android 11 and above okay so here uh, this is added only if you are uh, targeting android 11 and above okay so let me just uh, now run the program but before running the program just uh, let's see whether we have written properly okay um, i have put a text box a button when you click on the button i'm going to call the content of this particular text box okay and pass it to this method okay In this method what it is going to do is it's just calling the tts object which you had created earlier and asking it to speak the text what you have passed to me okay and then uh, i'm going to say q add okay let me run the program now uh, let me just use a emulator and run the program okay let me just repeat what i said for q by that while my uh, emulator is running okay number one q add and q flush all right uh, let's say that that, that uh, there are two sentences to be spoken okay first sentence while i'm speaking if i say speak the second sentence q add will add the second sentence to the first sentence so that once you finish the first sentence uh, reading second sentence will be added and it will continue to uh, play but if you write the word q underscore flush what will happen while i click on the second time second sentence the first sentence will be cleared whatever is there it will be flushed or removed and then um, the new sentence will come into picture okay so uh, let me just see whether uh, it runs let me run it Okay, let me rerun it. Okay, so you can see that uh, there's a voice notepad and there is a text box here. When I tap on it, you can see that uh, the idea or the label or hint goes on top. Okay, I'm now able to type something. Let me just uh, type. Okay, so I'll just say hello world from Android. Okay, I just want this text to be spoken. Now, when I click on tap, okay, please note um, uh, your TTS engine should be on and if uh, no other issues are there only, it will speak. If there is an issue, it will not work. Let me check whether uh, what I've written is right or wrong. Hello world from Android. Okay. So now, uh, since I've written it in Android 11 and I added that a manifest thing, so my TTS working is proper. Okay. So when I start talking, okay, when I put a big sentence and I speak, uh, start speaking, okay, so while it is speaking, if I add a new or if I just click on, okay, let me just put it as uh, some more, just a bigger word, that's all. Okay, I've just put a bigger word so that you see the difference between add and flush. All right, so first time I'm going to just click on speak text. Okay, and while it is speaking, I'm going to click on the button once again. So you have to read the sentence two times, isn't it? So please note what will happen. Hello world from Android mobile application development again. using Android. Hello world from Android mobile application development using Android. Do you got it? Okay, so um, two times it read it. It did not stop the first time and when it was reading the first sentence, I clicked on the button again. All right. But it did not stop. It continued. And since I pressed it second time, it uh, read the sentence second time. That is Q underscore add. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove that add and I'm going to put flush. Okay. What is the difference between these two is what I'm trying to show you. Okay. So um, let me select all and uh, I'll keep a copy because I want to type it again. All right. So let me run the program now. Okay, so now you, what happens is uh, when the first time I'm reading, if I tap while the reading is going on, if I tap on the button again, it will remove whatever it has been reading right now. The queue will be cleared and uh, the new one, uh, first from the beginning, it will start uh, playing. Okay, this is the difference between queue add and queue flush in text to speech. Okay, that's an inbuilt feature available in almost all Android uh, phones. Okay, so. Uh, Let's wait for the launch to happen. Yes, it's happening. Now, uh, let me just go to the text view or the text box. Okay. Now, please note when I'm trying to say speak text, while it is speaking, I will be pressing that button once again. See the difference. Hello world from Android mobile application. 
Hello world from Android mobile application development using Android. I hope you follow that. Okay. Uh, while it was reading, I clicked on the button. So what happened? What it was reading, it stopped. It cleared whatever it's supposed to read and it started with the new one. That's that's the difference between Q add and Q flush. All right. That's the first part. And this is only in your syllabus. Okay. Now the second part, what I'm about to do is um, something which is, uh, which is very predominant in all the phones and uh, uh, even every phone has this. Okay. Google has Google assistant uh, and Apple has Siri. Okay. Like that. Uh, it's called a voice recognizer. Okay. So before even we go to the artificial intelligence and that kind of code, let's do a simple basic code. Okay, the basic code is I say something to my phone, my phone should be able to write it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, the design is very, very simple. I'm going to keep the design as simple as possible. Uh, next, I'm going to put one text box, which is going to be bigger multi-line text box or something like that. Below that, one more button. Okay, so let me just do that. Let me go to uh, text. I'm going to choose multi-line text and put it below. Below that button and below that, one more button I'm going to put. Okay, that's all. And what I'm going to do with this multi-line text box is that uh, I'm going to put the properties. First of all, I'm going to name it as uh, ET contents. Okay. It's, I'm going to just put the word contents. Okay. Or the text content or something. It's not the, something to read. It's uh, the one which, which I'm going to put or input using uh, my voice. Okay. Not typing on the keyboard. I'm going to speak and make that come. So I'm going to use it as ET contents. Edit text which contains contents. All right. And uh, what I'm going to do here is. I'm going to say input type equal to multi-line. So uh, nothing else to do here. It, since it is multi-line, you can obviously uh, increase the size. Okay. So how do I increase it? You can also give a size. Okay. Height. Uh, you can give a height. So I'm going to just give 150 dp. Okay. So a little bit bigger and uh, below that button is there. So I'm going to just say btn vcmd voice command. Okay. I'm going to just put vcmd uh, voice command short form and the text I'm going to give it as uh, voice command. That's all. Okay. And uh, I'm going to give margin for them because I don't want them uh, to touch the border. Okay. So layout margin. Let me just give 15 DP each. All right. This is enough. Okay. If you want, you can increase the uh, size and color and all those things. I leave it to you. All right. So now all I need to do is I've already named them appropriately. So when you click on this voice command button, which method do you want me to call? Same method, which I've already created there in the code on click. Let me just choose that and say do action. Okay, same button, uh, uh, both the buttons will be calling the same method. Okay, and I will just write a switch case to find out which button you have clicked on. Okay, now uh, the next uh, few things what I'm going to do is I think uh, since we have only 15 minutes more, the remaining part too much is there. Uh, that is not too much. Uh, opening a text file, reading a text file, saving a text file, all these things we will do in tomorrow's class. Today's class, all I will do is uh, first part we have done. You type a text. You click on the button, the system will read that text for you. Okay. Second part, what I'm going to do today is you click on this voice command. I want you to speak something. Okay. And the system should recognize what you spoke and put that text, what you spoke in this uh, big box. Okay. That's all. That's all I want. Tomorrow we will make it as a command to open, uh, to read a file, to save a file, all those things. Okay. So that then only it will become a node, but otherwise it's just demonstrating two concepts. Okay. So first let me go to main activity. As I've already told you, uh, I will never write everything in the same method. Uh, rather, I would recommend you to create some simple, uh, what do you call different methods uh, if possible. Okay. So uh, what we will do here is, <clears throat> We'll create a method called public void um, voice command. Okay. I'm going to just put voice command or uh, okay. Just let's keep it as voice command right now. Nothing to be passed. Okay. So when you call this voice command uh, method, all I want you to do is open Google's recognizer intent. Okay. Uh, it is Google's uh, intent, which, which will have a mic in the middle. I think most of you would have seen when you tap on Google assistant, what, what gets on the front. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to bring it up, but that is not my activity. It's Google's activity. I hope you get the difference. This main activity is what I created. I am trying to call, uh, what Google has created. So basically I'm trying to move from one place to another. Okay. So when I'm trying to move from one place to another, normally the concept which I use in Android is intent. Okay, so I'm going to say intent space i is equal to new intent. Now, this is not um, uh, explicit intent, it's an implicit intent. Okay, so which means I just need to tell uh, what am I planning to do. System will pull up, uh, I mean, uh, 
uh, appropriate activity so i'm going to say recognizer intent please look at the word recognizer intent dot recognize speech what action would you like to do i would like to recognize speech what the user speaks okay and before i even call this uh, intent i am going to put some extra data number one which language so how do i pass data between intents extra okay so i'm going to call what is the name again all the names will be a, a constant value so you just need to just call them okay number one what is the language extra language put extra okay what is the language language i'm going to say um, you can just put local dot english or i can just say local dot get default because uh, whatever you are currently using in your phone is a comfort language for you obviously if you are not comfortable with uh, a particular language you won't make that language as uh, the system default language of your phone right so i've just written local dot get default whatever you are using in the phone currently that language okay that will be the language which i'm trying to recognize one second thing is do you want any prompt okay i want to show some message to the user what to do so i'm going to say extra prompt okay and uh, i'm going to say what would you like to do all right okay and uh, what i'm going to do next is uh, start activity okay here there's a small difference guys okay okay normally uh, whatever whenever we move from one activity to another activity okay so far what we have done uh, just think about the first program what we had on the lab record program uh, i think we took uh, a number from one activity we went to the next activity that's it okay and uh, wherever we have used an intent so far we have only gone one way it's a one way communication you go from one place to another place very simple but here it is not you just don't want to go away you want to come back here now uh, let me give you a sample let's say for example when you click on this button here i want uh, google's intent to come with the mic and uh, uh, the microphone and the one which i say something and google recognizes it okay after google recognizes it i want what google has recognized that text what i spoken say for example i say how are you i want to take that how are you text and put it in this text box this is what i want okay how do i do that okay so for that please note you can't just write the word start activity if you write start activity it will just go to google's intent it will not come back to my program i want this to come back to my program so you should say start activity for result okay so i'm going to say start activity please note there is another method called for result please do remember this okay so i'm going to call start activity for result okay and i need to pass some parameters number 1 what is the intent number 2 is the request code okay so how do i call this request code okay uh, for that i just need to mention uh, uh, an integer i don't want the integer to be normal so i'm going to just give a constant value i'm going to say speech underscore code okay so since it is like this what i'm going to do is i'm going to say create a constant field and let me just give some number randomly done okay so start activity for result this is what i'm going to give uh, in order for the system to start okay uh, i'll tell you what is the deprecation part later but right now let's see whether it works okay so first thing is start activity for result okay please note this uh, actually expects you to bring it back okay to bring um uh, the uh, the content back to this particular activity so how do i do that okay it's very simple uh, when activity is gone uh, to the next page from this activity you have gone to the next activity for a particular result all you need to do is once that result comes back what am i supposed to do so the method which i'm going to write next is on activity result please note that on activity result okay i'm going to call this method i'll write it once again okay uh, the code did not get uh, i did not type the full thing i'm just going to say on activity result okay this is the method which we are looking for on activity result what will it return it will return the request code which i just passed here result code whether it is uh, successful or not and then this uh, this uh, part is not required just nullable is enough okay and the data is passed via an intent okay that's all so i've got the activity result and to write some code in that okay so what i'm going to write here in the activity result it's very simple i'm going to first check whether uh, everything is proper how do i check i'm just going to write a simple if condition if 
the data what you are getting back from the uh, activity is not equal to null which means something is there okay first condition second one that uh, re result code what you got result code what i have written here okay so i'm going to say result code is equal to equal to um, i'm going to say result underscore cancelled or uh, or okay i'm going to say if the result is okay then look at this if condition you'll understand what i'm saying if whatever comes back from the google's intent is not null which means something is there and the result says result is okay then do something okay uh, right now i'm writing only one code guys tomorrow i'll be making it into multiple codes so i'm going to write a switch case switch case of what request code right now i have only one request code later i'll be changing it so i'm going to write request code and then i'm going to write case uh, if it is speech code what do you want me to do break default I wanted to just break okay that's it so now what, what do you want me to do here uh, if you have clicked on the spoken uh, speech code okay I wanted to get what the user has spoken how will I get what the user has spoken very simple create a uh, string called as spoken text spoken underscore text is equal to from where will I get it from the these two are just numbers I don't I can't take anything in this but data is passed what result the activity is uh, the Google's activity what you have open okay uh, what is it coming back with it's coming back with some data so I can just pull that data so I want to say data dot get get what okay whatever comes from uh, the um, Google's uh, recognizer enter uh, intent is considered as string array of list okay or string array list all right so I'm going to say get string array list extra and what is the name of that same way how you have written like this recognizer intent dot extra results okay the result of that extra i hope you got this right okay and then please note it is a uh, what does it return it returns a string array list okay i want only the text what he spoke what uh, remaining code and all i don't want so i'm going to say dot get get the first value get of zero means first value right so whatever you get there from a string array list get the first value you'll get the spoken text all right i'll explain more tomorrow guys but let me just finish the program okay and all i'm going to do right now is call that uh, uh, the, the second text box i think we didn't create it let me just create it quickly okay edit text let me name it as uh, result content and here i'm going to say result content is equal to find view by id r dot id dot uh, et contents okay the read content is different contents is different okay so uh, once i've got that all i need to do here in the speech code uh, whatever you have spoken in that uh, recognizer inter intent get that and put it here in this text box which is nothing but result uh, content dot set text to this spoken text that's it okay that's all i'm going to do let me run the program let me show you what i've done so far so that tomorrow when we do the remaining part it should not be confusing for us okay so let me just run this program guys now and uh, before i proceed with the program i need to tell if you are using your phone it will be very be uh, very much better this program especially i would recommend you to use an actual phone than the emulator okay because emulator is not so perfect with respect to speaking as well as recognizing the voice because it has to use your laptop's uh, mic okay so uh, I would recommend you to use uh, an actual phone but since I'm not able to do so right now uh, I'm using the emulator itself and in order to use the emulator's uh, microphone first of all you need to go to the settings if you are uh, in, still you're going to use the emulator only you'll have to go to the microphone settings here and enable all these three things one two three all the three you should enable okay then come back and uh, here I'm not going to type anything because I'm going to speak it out. Okay, so I'm going to just say voice command. Please note when I click on voice command, what should happen? Okay, so let me come to the, oh, I've not written the code. Let me quickly write that also. Okay, so uh, case r.id.btn voice command. If you click on that button, what do you want me to do? I want you to call this method called voice command. So I'm going to just call voice command method and break. Okay, sorry about that. I have to call that once again. And please note that setting which I just turned on uh, three times, the, the microphone part will keep resetting every time you restart your emulator. 
okay remember that so every time you start your emulator that microphone has to be turned on because it's a sensitive thing it takes it from your laptop and then passes it to the emulator so your laptop's mic will be utilized first then it will be passed on to your emulator that's why it's a little bit slow but anyway let's try now uh, let me just click on it when you click on this button what am i calling i'm calling voice command i wanted to see the flow of the program uh, voice command what am, what am i doing when you click on voice command I am asking another intent, another activity to come forward. Which one? The activity which will be able to recognize speech should be called. Okay, so right now by default I have Google, so Google should come here. All right, and the language of the speech, what I am uh, expecting is English, which is the default language of my phone. Second one is what would you like to do? Okay, that will be the prompt which will come along with my uh, voice command. Let me just open it. Okay. Uh, again, Google, all these things Google will take care. Okay, so it's just asking allow Google to record audio because it's the first time I'm accessing it. So let me just click on allow. Now, this is what you see here is the Google's recognizer intent. Now, whatever I spoke, uh, it should try to translate, but uh, I don't know how far it will be doing better because uh, it is using my emulator's uh, microphone. Okay, so whatever I spoke right now, okay, whatever Google thinks I spoke right now is now put in that text box. How did that happen? Okay, just go through the flow guys. Just uh, one minute, I'll finish it out. Okay, so when you click on voice command, this block of code is called. And then this block of code is called, an intent has been created to call the, um, the box which you saw. Okay, that is not in my activity, it is from Google's activity. So that comes, okay, and also you can see that, uh, uh, what would you like to do here? This part I gave from the code. Okay, what would you like to do? And that came here below and uh, let me stop talking for a minute. Okay, fine. Then it calls and whatever I spoke right now uh, is uh, taken as a result and comes back as activity result. When the data comes back, data is not null because I spoke something and the result is okay. And the speech code is the same thing which I passed here. Speech code is 111. If the same 111 is returning this uh, activity, what am I supposed to do? Get whatever the user has spoken and put it in my text box. That's all is happening so far. Okay, what we'll do tomorrow is, tomorrow we will take voice command from the user and try to open an already existing text file. We'll try to save whatever we have typed, whatever we have spoken into another text file. Okay, we'll try to clear the content, all those things we will do tomorrow's class. Okay, so with this, I'll stop for today, guys.